with us this morning to worship and lift up the name of Jesus. That's why we're in the house this morning. So we're just so glad that you're here. And now that you're here, take a moment. Take it seriously. It's time to worship the Lord. It's a privilege to worship him. It's a privilege to worship him freely in our homes, in our churches, wherever we want to worship him. If we want to sit on your porch and listen the word outside. You can do that freely. And what an awesome privilege it is to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our provider, our healer, our miracle worker, our way maker. What a privilege it is this morning just to bless his name. That's why I love this song we're about to sing so much just because it focuses on God and just how holy he is, how worthy he is.
God can love us. There is no one that can keep us the way that God can keep us. There is no one that can comfort us the way that our God can comfort us. Many have searched the world all over. Some are recovering on this Sunday morning, even as we speak, as we stand here before you today. Some are watching as they're trying to recover from a search on last night. Looking for love, looking for pleasure, looking to please the flesh. But God said there is no one that can love you like he can love you. No one that can comfort you the way that he can comfort you. No one that can keep you the way that God can keep you. And I tell you that you are in the right place at the right time, amen, to understand and to know that God can bless you in spite of what you feel, in spite of what you're going through. He can love you through your mess, love you through your test, love you through the challenges and the drama of a life. And there is absolutely no one else that can do it like God can. We are thankful today and we welcome you to New Day Community Church, our online live stream service. It's good to have you on this Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, if you would, go with me to the book of Acts and we're going to jump into the word of God. The book of Acts, the 16th chapter. And the set the ninth verse, the book of Acts, the 16th chapter and the ninth verse. The Bible reads and says a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and to help us. This is the beginning. It says and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and to help us. This is where it begins, and this is where we're going to end on today. It says, uh, and brought at first number 30, 29 says, then he called for a light and sprang in and tr came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Brought them out and said, What must I do to be saved? Again, the beginning says, A vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man in Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. I want to talk to you briefly this morning on the subject of my comeback is a come up. My comeback is a come up. Life presents to us many challenges and opportunities at the same time. We have the challenges of living on a day-to-day -day basis in a society for some of us that does not even like the color of our skin. We have the challenges of living in a society sometime where people don't like you just because they don't like you. Does not matter how nice you are or how pleasing you are to the eyes because they choose not to like you. They choose to, 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 to challenge you in every aspect of your, com your coming together or your fellowship. We live in a time where we are faced with the many challenges of trying to handle our financial situation, trying to handle our family situations, trying to have the challenge of handling, amen, living on a daily basis come sometime with tests that are challenging to our mind and to our body. But at the same time, as we have all of these challenges, we also have opportunities to succeed and to excel. 
However, my brothers and sisters, with every opportunity and the, 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 the opportunity and the, 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 that is presented to us to walk through an open door, we must make a choice and a decision as to whether we're going to accept that opportunity or to continue to stay in the situation that we're in and wrestle with challenges that were not meant for us to go through all of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have the opportunity presented to us uh, to open a door to another career. The opportunity presented to us uh, to change our career field or to go into a, to educate ourselves to move to another level, to move in another direction. Uh, the door will open up for us to get a new job or get, amen, I put ourselves in a position for a promotion. But if with that opportunity, uh, we have to make a choice whether we're going to take the opportunity or to continue to wrestle with the challenges and the struggle of where we presently are. For many of us, we will choose to stay with the challenges and the struggles and expect God to make a way out of no way. Well, I come to remind you this morning that the way out of no way is the opportunity that he has set before your eyes. And sometimes it's going to be hard and we may not be, think that we're able or capable or have the skill set to accomplish what God has laid before us. But what God has done is he opens up the opportunity and it's our faith that allows us to walk through the door. We have to remember who we are. Our comeback is a come up. Amen. Mm. So, so, so now as we walk this walk and we live this life and we represent Christ in our daily living at the same time with the smile on our face, we know that we are facing dire situations, sometimes at home, sometimes in our financial state, sometimes within our relationship, but at the same time as we wrestle with the struggles that are presented by life, at the same time that God has presented opportunities and a means and a way out for you to go into your new day. Mm. So, so, so I'm excited this morning to know that as we live and we walk and we walk according to the word of God, amen, and the challenges and the struggles of life, as much as we have to deal with these challenges, we have the opportunity to have a comeback. Uh, because sometimes we will fall and sometimes we will struggle and sometimes we will stumble, but we have the opportunity to come back. And when we come back, that is our opportunity to make our come up. We go over into the book of, of Acts, the 16th chapter, and we see Paul here says that he now sees a, a man in a vision calling him to Macedonia. Uh, being the man of God that Paul is and knowing who he is, uh, he has this vision and, and because of who he is, he assuredly, he knows that it is the Lord's bidding and he's called to uh, Macedonia to preach the gospel. It says that on the Sabbath they went out to the riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spoke to the women which were which resorted there, and a certain woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken to Paul, that were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, Watch this. If we have judged, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So Paul now has been called to Macedonia. Uh, he, he knows who he is, and because of his relationship with God, as he receives the vision, he receives the instruction from God, he trusts God enough to do what he instructs him to do. Uh, have you ever, let me pause for a moment, have you ever spoke, has God ever spoken to you, and you knew exactly what he desired for you to do? Uh, has he ever given you something, given you a vision, he spoke something in your ear, presented something before your eyes, and you knew exactly what the next step was that you need to take? Uh -huh. so, so Paul here sees a vision, and because of this vision, he changes his whole trajectory and goes to Macedonia. 
because he's seen a vision of a man crying out to hell. Anytime, saints of God, as a man and a woman of God, as we, we call ourselves the Christians, the, the saints, the ecclesia, amen, anytime that we find an opportunity to serve God's people, we should be anxious and be able or be willing to change our trajectory to do the work and the will of the Lord. I, I, I got my own business to take care of. I, I've got things that I desire to do. I, I've got stuff that I've got on my plate that I, 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 I'm going to focus on right now. But when God presents himself, when God shows you a vision, when God shows you another direction that he needs you to go, we've got to be humble enough to say, Lord, if you desire for me to go to the right, then to the right is where I will go. If you desire for me to go to the left, then to the left is where I will go. When, when we call Paul, he says, he calls him to Macedonia. He sees this in a vision and Paul immediately goes there. And he finds himself now in a place where the ministry is taking place and he is being obedient to God. He is in his flow. Amen. He's in his zone. Uh, he, he, he heard from God uh, and he did what the Lord says. Uh, and when you hear from God, and I ask a question, have you, ever, have you ever heard God tell you and give you an instruction to do something and then you do what God has instructed you to do? Amen. The, the joy of this is, is that you find yourself, you can you experience the peace of knowing that I'm operating in the will of God. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I might not have as much money as the other one. I, I may not have things going on according to the what the world would desire to see me have. Oh, but in my peace, in my relationship with God, me to know that I'm doing the will of God, that I'm in the flow and I'm going in the right direction. Paul found himself flowing in the right direction. He found himself going into this city and now he meets these women in prayer. And because of the anointing that is on his life, this woman named Lydia even sees and is the seller of purple. Here is what here's what the Lord is saying through Paul. She gets baptized. She in, in her in her whole household, Amen. And she finds herself so so much engulfed in what believing so much in what Paul was saying that, Amen. She inquires of Paul and asks, "If I see the faith that's on you, I see the anointing that is on your life, Amen. And if you can see the same thing in me, would you come and sup with me at my house? Would you come and be be uh, come in a buy in this place with me because when you are doing God's work, when you are doing the will of the Lord he'll put you in such a flow that you will not want for nothing. You won't have to be wondering where the next meal is coming from, how to keep the roof over your head, how the car note is going to be paid, how the children are going to be taken care of because this woman of faith connected with a man of faith and he, she came out of nowhere but the Bible reminds us this seller of purple she had a sense. So much so she had her own house and her own things. The things that she possessed. The cause of who she was and who she had connected to. Her desire was not to be stingy. Her desire was not to be out for her own good. But her desire was to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And she just figured if I'm going to bless the kingdom, I might as well bless the man a woman of God. So she calls Paul into the house. She leans to his faith and says that if I see the faith that's on you, and if you can entrust the same faith that's in me, I inquire of you to come into my house and I will take care of you in this moment and in this hour. And she opened up the door to him. This was an opportunity to Paul. An opportunity for Paul. He was in his flow. And God was flowing right along with him. Just making sure that every need was taken care of. 
We know this man by the name of Michael Jordan. And, and throughout his career, as one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived, Michael Jordan, he would tell you sometimes, when he was scoring 50 and 60 points, he would say it just seems like the goal got bigger. The net just enlarged itself because he felt like he was just in his flow. He would just shrug his shoulders and say, I just can't explain it because everything was falling. I come to remind you, saints of God, that when you get in a flow with God, everything just keeps on falling. Everything keeps on dropping. It just seems like blessings on blessings coming from the left and right. Don't understand why, but it's because you're in your flow. It's because you're doing the will of the Lord. Because your number one priority is making sure that the kingdom has been taken care of. That God's people have been served. Somebody give God some praise. I'm in my flow. It seems like everything is going my way. It seems like everything is working in my favor. This is a good time to be in the kingdom because hell is breaking out all around us. It seems like trouble is on every side. We got trouble in government. We got trouble in economy. We got trouble with pandemics. But tell your neighbor, I'm just getting in my flow. I see everything that's happening. But I've got my eyes on the prize. I'm going to keep on doing the will of the Lord. I'm just going to get in my flow and watch everything keep falling.
<laughs> seem to be going in Paul's way. He cried as he began to go along. There were men servants of the Most High. God, that, that, that God showed unto salvation. But Paul, in as many days it says, being grieved, had to turn around because he met a woman with a spirit of divination that continued behind him saying, follow Paul crying that these men of the, of the most high and show us the way unto salvation. He said, but at the, at the, at the many days, Paul being grieved, turned and grieved in his spirit. He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very same hour. Just as sure as Paul was on his A game, then comes this damsel trying to destroy his character, trying to destroy what God had built in him, trying to take credit for what God was doing in his life, trying to connect with him on a level that she was not capable. Saints of God, be careful who you allow to attach to your anointing. Be careful who you allow to come in your circle. Sometimes it's good to be by yourself. Sometimes it's good to reduce your numbers. Understand that what God is doing is pulling you down so he can push you up. What he's doing is separating you from all the haters, separating you from all the drama, because the very one you said, I love you dearly, the very one you said, that is my brother, that is my sister, the very one you said would never leave you, is the very one you'll find stabbing you in your back. So himself. He turned to the woman. She wasn't saying anything bad, but what she was doing was causing confusion. And saints of God, remember that God is not the author of confusion. And so he had to turn and address this damsel. Don't you be afraid to confront your enemies. There's Saying, 
daily task to make sure that everybody stayed behind the bars and the cost or the risk of him not doing and handling this task would be that he would experience death. But because Paul and Silas knew who they were, he told them, he says, this prisoner, this keeper, he said he drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we all are here. What would allow you to keep yourself in the middle of a place where you should have been bad? In the middle of a place where there was nothing but sadness. In the middle of a place where it was full of negativity. Would keep yourself, keep yourself bound up in the middle of a place surrounded by criminals. Sanitation wasn't to the, to the, the standard. To Keep yourself locked up in a dire down and dreary place because when you have God living on the inside of you, that's enough to get me excited. When you have the spirit of the living God down on the inside of you, it does not matter about your location because at any moment, God. God, at any moment, God, it does not matter about what I'm in right now, because at any moment, God can turn my situation, turn my situation around. I know without a shadow of a doubt that yes, he's done it before, that he can do it again. But Paul and Silas, they weren't worried anyway because they knew that they'd already been free. And whom the sun set free is free indeed. I come to let you know that your comeback is your come up. And out of this situation, souls were saved. Lives were changed. We're set free because of the testimony. My comeback is my come up. I need you to know this morning that what you are going through is just a little while. It's just a moment. It's just a minute in your time. But God sees. God knows everything that you're going through. you another chance give you chances life presents opportunities God gives us the sense he gives us the means give me something real real soft he gives me some he gives us means he says if, if you repent of your sins he's faithful and he is just to forgive you of your sins. What does this mean? That it means that whatever, whatever I have done that is wrong, he gives me the chance to make it right. There are going to be doors that are going to be open. There are going to be opportunities for you to come up, but you've got to make a choice. That I'm in my flow. I'm in my flow. I'm leading in worship. I'm leading at the ushers. I'm, I'm 
working in the ministry. I'm in my flow. My voice, I'm singing before hundreds of people. I'm, I'm standing before God's people. I'm ministering. I'm in my flow. But challenges, challenges, situations are going to torment. We have to choose Christ. We have to choose and know who we are. Paul knew through it, although he was in his flow. As challenges came, well, a woman, the woman came to try to distract him from the call that he had received. The challenge came and the businessman tried to put his name, began to put his name in the dirt to lock him up, trying to challenge him. But he was in his flow. He knew who he was. And in the midst of it, he stood tall. He stood tall, do what you're going to do. I'm still going to serve my God. Say what you got to say. I'm going to stay in my flow. Our God called me here. God called me. God called me. God called me to this place. God called me to this position. God anointed me for this. I can't get tired. I can't get weary. I can't uh, allow the enemy to distract me. He can't distract me with money. He can't distract me with booze and bays and, and all these people that tr are trying to connect to me. Somebody's got to get cut off because I'm in my flow. And as I come up, everybody can't come with me. Everybody that say they love me, they can't come with me. Everybody that said they're going to be there, they couldn't come with me. There's a reason for the separation. There's a reason for the disconnect. There's a reason that I had to draw the line and to say, I'm going somewhere. God is calling me to hire. He's calling me to my come up. And I've got to leave some stuff behind. I've got to leave some people behind. I've got to leave some mess behind. I can't let uh, my old sin, my old me, hold me back from where God has taken me to. My comeback is a come up. And I'm going to a place where I become unstoppable. I don't even understand it myself. I don't know what God is doing. I don't know why he took me here. I don't know why he brought me here. I'm sitting here in Hinesville. I'm sitting here in Walthamville. I'm listening to this, this, to this broadcast this morning. I don't even know why I stopped here, but I'm here now, and I see that God has me in a flow, and I've got to go somewhere. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep going. Get me ready. Get me ready for my come up. You may be down now. But stay in your flow. Uh, this connect hurts sometimes. But stay in your flow. Separation hurts sometimes. But stay in your flow. Loss hurts sometimes, but stay in your flow. You're going to miss some people, but stay in your flow. Don't lose your character. Don't get desperate. Don't get hasty. What God has for you is going to be just for you. That next job is going to blow your mind. Less money with more peace. <laughs> Watch God. More money and more peace. Man, he's going to give you just what you need, just what you need. Just what you need. Just what you need to fit in with your church, your relationship with God. He's going to give you just what you need to fit the pieces together. That career that will allow you to worship and to serve and to make the money that you desire to have. The, 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 that, that new home that it will allow you to be where you desire to be and still have the resources to be a blessing to the kingdom. Amen. That husband that's going to be the one that connects with you, that's going to love your children, that's going to love you for who you are. That man that God will see. That woman that's going to complete you. 
I don't know where I'm here, but we're here now. That woman that will complete you, that will help you to be the man that God called you to be. She won't like everything about you. She might not like everything that you do, but together y'all are going to accomplish some stuff. It's going to fit the way it needs to fit. And the kingdom is going to increase. So take you on your come up. Stay in your flow. Stay in your flow. Father, we thank you. We thank you for how you're orchestrating the flow. For how you're pushing us into our destiny. How you're trimming us down to make us agile and mobile to make it to our next de destination. Uh, heal the hurt. Heal the pain. Restore the joy. And don't allow us to get out of character. But keep us with our hearts and minds stayed on you. That we walk the way you would have us to walk. That we move the way you would have us to move. That you touch marriages, that you touch families, that you touch homes, that you keep the single husband, the single men, and the single women. Lord God, that they serve you as you complete their puzzle. And we thank you, God, for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And the blessings that are falling and raining down while we're in the flow. Lord God, let it overtake us enough where we don't even understand what's happening. Just make it big, God. Just make it big, God. Where we don't even understand. But because we're in our flow, we stay consistent with your word. We thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do for this and all things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, celebrate God in Jesus' name. Come on, real big in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We bless you. We are excited. In Jesus' name. In his name we shout amen. Can we give God the biggest praise we got? Can we give God the biggest praise? The best praise we got. for being with us. We're excited about what God is doing here at New Day Community Church. Amen. I ask if you would that you make a note make a note, amen, that as you leave off of this live stream that you remember, amen, to sow seed in your giving. Amen. I promise this is good ground. New Day Community Church is on the move and we have a mission for the kingdom and serving this community. Sow your seed. You can reach us. You can cash app us at dollar sign NDCC Hinesville or you can go to our website at NDCCHinesville.org we appreciate your giving and the seed that you sow we are calling it blessed in advance and how it's going to impact the kingdom of God listen next week we are excited because we're going to have, we're going to be able to celebrate these amazing volunteers and those that have served, that are serving here at New Day Community Church. So at 9.30, we're going to be live in a drive-in service. You're going to be welcome to drive in. Watch our Facebook page for a flyer to see the information on where we'll be and how we're going to do it. If in nothing else, if you can't drive in, meet us back here at 9.30 on next Sunday and you'll see everything that's happening. Amen. God bless you until next Sunday. We bless you.